Reagan was elected to the presidency, he installed Louis Giafrida as head of FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Giafrida was an old cold warrior from Reagan's California days whose specialty was suppression of unrest and dissent. Giafrida, North, and George Bush began to turn FEMA into an instrument of domestic anti-terrorism. We're dealing with a group of people in the Reagan administration who equated political dissent with treason and who cannot differentiate between emergency procedures, which I think everyone agrees are necessary, and suppressing political dissent. And with North and Poindexter and Casey, we have a group of people who saw Americans who disagree with them as the enemy. Colonel North, in your work at the uh, NSC, were you not assigned at one time to work on plans for the continuity of government in the event of a major disaster? Mr. Chairman, I believe that question touches upon a highly sensitive and classified area, so may I request that you not touch upon that, sir? I was particularly concerned, Chairman, because I read in Miami papers and several others that there had been a plan uh, developed by that same agency, a contingency plan in the event of emergency that would suspend the American Constitution. And I was deeply concerned about it and wondered if that was the area in which he had worked. I yeah, yeah, most, yeah, most respectfully request that that matter not be touched upon at this stage. If we wish to get into this, I'm certain arrangements can be made for an executive session. And tragically, the only member who got close was Jack Brooks. And he a radio host who says he predicted a staged attack on the World Trade Center involving Osama bin Laden as a fall guy in 2001 now says last week's red terror alert is just a trial run for a massive staged terror attack initiated by the U.S. government. <clears throat> Pardon me. Alex Jones says the attack will occur before the end of October and could provide the, quote, neo-fascist bloodsuckers in the administration with fraudulent justification to invade Iran or Syria before November's midterm elections. Is the president signing a, a statement relating to a law that basically says I'm not going to obey this law if I don't feel like it, or something larger, more aggressive, uh, domestic surveillance, or any of these other things? Where are the constitutional checks? Is that machinery still present? Is it still working? Is it rusted, or is it not working at all? Well, it's not working very well. Uh, yeah. Please. Thank you, Mr. President. It's an honor to have you here. Yes. I'm a first-year student in South Asia Studies. Uh, my question is, regar is in regards to private military contractors. The Uniform Code of Military Justice does not apply to these contractors in Iraq. I asked your Secretary of Defense a couple months ago what law governs their actions. Uh, Ms. I'm going to ask him. Go ahead. <laughs> 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 when the president had an opportunity to capture or kill Osama bin Laden, he took his focus off of him, outsourced the job to Afghan warlords, and Osama bin Laden escaped. Six months after he said Osama bin Laden must be caught dead or alive, this president was asked, where is Osama bin Laden? He said, I don't know. I don't really think about him very much. I'm not that concerned. We need a president who stays deadly focused on the real war on terror, Mr. President. of atrocities, murderous regimes, dedicating to killing us, tyranny, and terror. Uh, several countries that we would consider Arab countries have already been told by the Israelis to prepare that it's going to happen, and these leaders behind the scenes are supporting it, but will publicly stand up and condemn it. They have to. 
they don't have a choice because of the religion in their country. They're going to say, how could the Israelis do this? This is wrong. This is Zionism. Behind the scenes. In fact, let me tell you one nugget. You're going to love this. A man who is in Tampa, who works um, uh, here in Tampa, was sharing with me, and he's a, he's a very high-ranking military official. He said, you know, he says, I have been to Arabia, and I have met with the leaders in Persia, Arabia, Egypt, etc. He said, that's part of my job working for the government. He said, let me tell you something that would shock you. He said, publicly, they despise the Jew and they hate Israel. But he said, every leader, he says, now I'm telling you, the leaders will say to me privately, we know the land belongs to the Jews, and we know we can't whip them. He said, privately, privately, they'll tell you that. But he said, when it comes to the public and to the propaganda, they will absolutely go the opposite direction. He said, I'm telling you, one-on-one, -on -one, he started naming them, and it shocked me that he knew these people. He said, when you are one-on-one -on -one in a room with them, they'll say, we know. <laughs> The FEMA plans to imprison American citizens have generated a lot of interest around the country in locating the potential prison camps throughout the country. These may be facilities currently being used as prisons, such as those you saw earlier, or prisons that are being built supposedly in the name of the war on drugs, or facilities that have other uses but which could be quickly used to detain large numbers of people, such as this Amtrak facility in Beach Grove, Indiana. All of the renovations to this property have involved putting in new fencing, electronic turnstiles, concrete flooring in unused warehouse buildings, and putting in large gas furnaces on buildings that were never heated any time in the past 20 years. Outside this building is fencing and a cattle run section of fence, all topped by barbed wire, pointing inward not to keep people out, but to keep people in. This was common throughout the facility, particularly the new fencing that had been erected. No, I, I've always, you know, a dictatorship would be a heck of a lot easier, there's no question about it. For the first time at one of his news conferences in three years, Thomas asked him about Iraq. Ask you, Mr. President, you... Your decision to invade Iraq has caused the deaths of thousands of Americans and Iraqis, wounds of Americans and Iraqis for a lifetime. The every reason given, publicly at least, has turned out not to be true. My question is, why did you really want to go to war from the moment you stepped into the White House, from your cabinet, former cabinet officers, intelligent people, and so forth? Mm -hmm. What was your real reason? You would have said it was the oil, plus the oil. It hasn't been Israel or anything else. What was it? Uh, I think your premise, in all due respect to your question and to you as a, a lifelong journalist, is that you know I didn't want war. To assume I wanted war is just uh, is just flat wrong, Helen. In all due respect. No, hold on a second, please. No, excuse me. Excuse me. No president wants war. Everything you may have heard is that, but it's just simply not true. I, uh, um, my attitude about the defense of this country changed on September the 11th. Uh, we, uh, when we got attacked, I vowed then and there to use every uh, asset at my disposal to protect the American people. So our foreign policy changed on that day, Helen. You know, it, we used to think we were secure because of oceans and previous diplomacy. But we realized on September 11, 2001, that killers could destroy innocent life. And I'm never going to forget it. And I'm never going to forget the vow I made to the American people, that we will do everything in our power to protect our people. Part of that meant to make sure that we didn't allow people to provide safe haven to an enemy. That's why I went into Iraq. Hold on for a second. Look, look, look. Excuse me for a second, please. Excuse me for a second. They did. The Taliban provided safe haven for Al Qaeda. That's where Al Qaeda trained and Alan, excuse me. That's where that's where Al the uh, the targeting 
um, uh, to go after uh, suspected uh, training sites, et cetera, across the border and inside um, uh, Iran. That's just normal, I think. And you, you write that already some special operations forces, some U.S. intelligence forces have crossed the line and, and have gone into Iran. Is that right? Oh, yes, that's been happening for months. There's been a lot of very aggressive cross-border activity. It's more than just casual. There's been a lot of... Uh...